This is Ask Todd on the Financial Exchange Radio Network. If you have an existing estate plan or are in the market for one, Todd Lutsky is here to answer your questions and help you plan for later life. Ask Todd is presented by Cushing & Dolan, serving Massachusetts and New England for more than 35 years, helping families with estate and tax planning, Medicaid planning, and probate law. Visit CushingDolan.com. Now, here's Todd Lutsky. And we are joined now by Todd Lutsky from the law firm of Cushing & Dolan. The segment's called Ask Todd because you get to ask Todd your questions. We're going to open up the phone lines here at 888-205-2263. That's the number to call if you want to ask Todd a question about your estate plan right now on the financial exchange. Again, 888-205-2263. Mr. Lutsky, how are you today? I am never better than you. I'm doing pretty well. My uh, my two. What what are you doing over there? I'm just trying to fix my mic. Sorry about that. I think I broke it. Yeah, I mean you had all the time in the world, but it's okay. What what are you? <laughs> okay, you just hold that. Yeah, you just hold that what like that. What are you that. doing? I somehow broke my mic, but that's all right. We can oh, we'll get through this. Gosh. Well, look, my my two invisible friends. They had their first kid yesterday. Okay. Not much to look at. <laughs> I kind of figured that's where that was going. <laughs> but uh, on the plus side, I did. Uh, I, I had a great day yesterday myself, believe it or not. Guess who I saw? I have no idea. Everyone I looked at. Oh, well, that's, that's not, good. Yeah. good. Everyone good. you looked at. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about retirement accounts and how they fit into an estate plan. I know we talk an awful lot normally about traditional IRAs and 401ks and things like that. But can you stop fiddling? All right, I'm done. <laughs> when it comes to Roth IRAs, yes. if you're advising someone on their estate plan and they have the normal goals of, hey, we want to try to you know, make sure this stays in our bloodline, minimize estate taxes, and try to protect assets from a nursing home, what's your typical advice for someone with a Roth IRA? Or what's the conventional advice for someone with one? Yeah, so Roth IRAs are one of the assets I like to call difficult assets to deal with. Uh, like a regular IRA, like life insurance, these are what I call problem assets. Uh, one, with an IRA, if you want to do planning for an IRA and do all the things that you said, you can accept one. You can't put the Roth into the Medicaid trust to protect it from the nursing home. Remember, it has designated beneficiaries already, so it's going to avoid probate. We got that covered. Yep. Um, it, it's, it's not going to get into a Medicaid trust, though, on, on, y y well, I say it can't. It can go in, unlike an IRA. Just be mindful that when you put it in, it will no longer be a Roth. So you're saying, but you still have to pull the money out of it and put it into said trust. You can't I, you just, you, the, the Roth IRA cannot be titled in the name of the trust. Right. So if you have a Roth, we all know that the beauty of a Roth is it grows income tax free. And we love that. Um, and when you take it out, it comes out income tax free. And I also love that. So the downside is if I put it into a trust in order to protect it from the cost of nursing home care, which I, it's not when it's outside the trust, then it's no longer a Roth, as you said, it comes out. And, and the money then needs to be invested in the trust, again, any way you want, but it's going to grow taxable. Well, I guess unless you buy a bunch of municipal bonds, it's going to grow taxable. So is that a horrible thing? Well, I think you have to weigh your pros and cons. So let's do that for a minute. Let's say you come in and you want it. You, you know, Todd, I want to do nursing home planning. I want to protect my assets. I want to avoid probate and I want to reduce estate taxes. And the Roth is a big number. Maybe you had moved money into a Roth 10 years ago. Yeah. 15 years ago. Well, I might say, okay, if I don't put it in, it's not protected, and it's also not going to be sheltered for estate taxes because it's going to go directly to my spouse, likely, as the designated beneficiary. Those are two negatives. You know what? I might say, I've got 15 years of tax-free growth already. That's a pretty good deal. Yep. Maybe I take it out of the Roth. It's non-taxable, after all. I've already enjoyed a ton of tax-free growth. Maybe now it's time to take it out, stick it in the trust, and say, you know what? I enjoyed tax-free growth for a while. Now I'm going to protect all that tax-free growth and shelter it for estate taxes and nursing homes. That's an option. It's a very different calculus than with a conventional retirement asset where you'd have to be taxed upon that withdrawal. Right. You wouldn't even have this option, really, because you'd say, wow, if I take out the same amount of money out of my regular IRA, i got to give 40% of it to the government, potentially, because it puts me in a higher bracket. Mm. I might not even run that analysis. I might say just live on that money and, and leave it outside the trust. But you know what? 
the Roth, you do have that added option. So I think that's a, a great question and a great analysis to make. We're talking with Todd Lutsky from the law firm of Cushing and Dolan, and it's it's your chance to ask Todd your questions. So our studio line here is 888-205-2263. That's the number to call if you want to ask Todd your questions. Again, it's 888-205-2263. We're going to take a quick break right now, but when we come back, Right to your questions with Todd Lutsky. So if you have one, call 888-205-2263, and it's right to you when we return. Ask Todd with Todd Lutsky every Wednesday at 1030, only here on the Financial Exchange Radio Network. As we promised, we're going to go right to your calls with Todd Lutsky. First up, we got Mark in Boston. Mark, what's your question for Todd? Hi, good morning, gentlemen. I had a question. I'm in the process of doing my estate and trust uh, with Cushman Dolan, mm-hmm. and I had a question on this month's guide about uh, the IRAs and insurance going into the estate. Yes. And it's a two-parter. It's, the first part is, does the omnibus bill affect the age 72 requirement because the RMDs are going up? Mm-hmm. And, oh, so and I'll the answer the – oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, all right, and the second part is – I, I thought you were going to answer it earlier because uh, the Roth IRAs. Yep. C- can I can I name my estate as the beneficiary for my Roth IRAs, and does it get the same uh, nursing home protections as, as the other one, and does it have an age requirement as well? Excellent, excellent questions, and I will take both of them right now. So, the first thing is yes, this new uh, they're going to call it the Secure Act Two. I have read it. A summary, I got to tell you, it just came out. So I've only read the summary. I don't have all the details, but I do have the detail you're looking for. So you can still name your IRA, the designated beneficiary, the estate. But in, for for uh, 2023, you need to be 73 years of age. That's the required beginning date. Right now, the required beginning date, which is the date in which you must make distributions from your IRA. The required beginning date now is 72. The required beginning date next year is 73. And the required beginning date, I believe it's 2025, is 75. So it's it's ratcheting up the required beginning date, which means, hey, good news, you get to keep your money in your IRA longer. Uh, But in order to name the designated beneficiary, none of that changes the planning that's in the guide for this month in terms of do we do that? Do we set up a testamentary trust? Do we name our estate the designated beneficiary if we want to try and protect the IRA from the nursing home? This doesn't change any of that except timing when you do it, right? Make sure you don't name your estate the beneficiary of your IRA until you are 73 starting next year. Now, to the Roth. Can you do it with a Roth? Yes, same rules apply. So with a Roth, you have the same required minimum distribution rules that you have for an IRA. You can name the estate the designated beneficiary. The only issue that's different is when you are making those required minimum distributions after the person dies, they have to come out or they come out income tax free. That's the only difference. Otherwise, same rules apply. Folks, this is a great question because it's exactly what we're doing. And we're coming up here on the end of the month, end of the year. And it's time to get this guide. IR, naming your estate the designated beneficiary of an IRA and or life insurance. Two problematic assets that were difficult to deal with in the past. Now, we actually have our first opportunity as a way of protecting these assets from the nursing home in advance of going in. Please learn how to do it. Call and get the guide. We're running out of time this month. 866-848-5699 or go to LegalExchangeShow.com. Download the guide there. Again, one more time, 866-848-5699 or LegalExchangeShow.com. Todd, we've got another caller for you. Let's go to Tom on the North Shore. Tom, you are on with Todd Lutsky. Great, thanks. Yeah, I have a question. Um, I am recently retired. I'm going to begin taking money out of uh, a trust that's been set up. In that Mm -hmm. trust are two houses and some cash assets, Mm -hmm. uh, cash as well as uh, IRA and 
ASAP account. Mm -hmm. So that's what's in the trust. So the question is, those two houses, I'm still paying on them um, principal, interest, tax, insurance. So I'm like, I'm thinking, why am I taking, let's say it's $55,000 a year out of that trust and then sitting down writing a check to the to pay that versus can I have that same trust bypass me and just service so, those two properties? Let me ask you this. Did you set up this trust? Is this a trust that you created, you and your wife, perhaps, if you're married? No, it's no, I set it up with Christian and Dolan. No, no, but ago. but but you're the creator of the trust. You're the one that meaning yes, we drafted it. That that's correct. But you're the donor, right? You're the, you're it's your assets that you put in there. Correct. Okay. And are you married? Yes. Okay. So and it's an irrevocable trust. Correct. Excellent. So the answer is that yes, if you have money inside that trust, like a, an investment portfolio or a bank account or something, and it's got assets in it, you can use those dollars to pay real estate taxes, you know, uh, utilities, expenses, things like that, fixing the bathroom, all those things. You can use that money to pay those things. Now, the mortgage is the one item you probably can't. We probably reserved a life estate in that, and it's your you're on the hook for the mortgage personally, right? And so if you're going to pay that, I would use your own money to pay that. Now, if you're taking income from the trust, which you are absolutely allowed to do, so if this portfolio is generating interest and dividends and you want to take that interest and dividends out and pay the mortgage, that's okay. Real estate taxes, utilities, other things like that, you can use it the money in the trust. But I would want to check with you just to see if we reserved a life estate. Because if we did, it actually makes sense to use money outside the trust. Since you're the life tenant, you have the right to live there. You get to keep your mortgage. That's the way we designed it. And to use money outside the trust, even if it's from an IRA that we can't protect, to pay those, is to pay those bills. Why? Because money outside the trust is at risk for the nursing home. So why not spend those dollars down, leave the money that's in the trust protected, and spend the money outside the trust to maintain that property, which you're entitled to do as a life tenant, and leave the money in the trust that is protected and let it grow. So that that's kind of my approach, but uh, I know there's a lot to unpack in that answer, Tom, and if you need to, certainly give me a jingle off, off air as well, and I'd be happy to get into that in a little more detail for you but hopefully that was helpful we've got one more call we'll go to joseph and douglas joseph we only have about a minute left so you got to be quick with your question for todd here okay todd how you doing thank you very much for taking my call todd i'm a 63 year old man uh i own a house with about four hundred thousand dollars it's in a trust with my daughter as a beneficiary mm -hmm. i have a uh, retirement accounts totaling about seven hundred seventy thousand dollars and i'm looking to protect that uh as i'm already retired and joining social security and i don't see myself dying anytime soon but right. yet i do have a heart condition i want to try and protect as best i can so in this case the answer is the retirement it sounds like the house you've already started protecting it by putting it into a hopefully an irrevocable trust in which your daughter will ultimately be the beneficiary when you die so that that's good news if you've done that if i if i heard you correctly and and the uh the retirement account is the issue because you're 63 and you have an irrevocable trust, you're young enough that you can start making withdrawals from that IRA after 59 and a half. You don't have to, but you can. And manage your income tax bracket. Don't take it out so it puts you into a higher bracket and slowly bleed it into the trust. But don't do it for more than about three or four years. Extend your waiting period every time you do that. I squeezed a lot into that, but you can bleed it out slowly over a few years, and hopefully that helps a little. Todd Olenski, thanks for joining us today. Always a pleasure. Thank you. The views expressed in this segment are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Armstrong Advisory does not provide any legal or tax advice. Please consult with your legal or tax advisor on such matters. Cushing and Armstrong do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. This has been Ask Todd on the Financial Exchange Radio Network. Ask Todd with Todd Lutzke has been presented by Cushing and Dolan, serving Massachusetts and New England for more than 30 years, helping families with estate and tax planning, Medicaid planning, and probate law. Call 800-393-4001 or visit CushingDolan.com. Com.